to read it again. Does anybody have another version? I have one. All right, read your version, please. Promise me, O woman of Jerusalem, by the by the gazeless and wild deer, not to awaken love until the time. Until so the right. appropriate. What version is that? And, Okay, up until the appropriate time. Daughters of Jerusalem, I'm, I'm gonna generalize it to all youth of CMFI, right? Mm. Do not arouse or awaken love until the appropriate time. Amen. Amen. So, your emotions that you're having now, the crashes that you're having now, it is there. But this scripture is telling us that do not revive it, do not activate it until the appropriate time. Because remember we, pro we spoke before to say that there is a time and a season for everything under heaven. Anything that you do before its appropriate time, you will not enjoy it to the fullest. You will have regrets, there will be consequences. You know, it's like, it's like a, a, a mango on a tree. When you see it, it is really strong. When you eat it, you don't enjoy it. It's not nice. But when it's nice and soft, it's succulent. When it has you now are happy with it. You enjoy it to its full capacity. In the same way, emotions, sex, love, feelings, crushes, dating, relationships, there is a time for these kind of things to be activated. And it comes with age. It comes with maturity. It comes with a certain level in your life. At the age of 15, you cannot be saying, I have a crush to someone and I want to do something about it. You're not going to get married in the next two years. You're, you don't even have money to, 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 to give to a girl, you know, because you're probably still getting pocket allowance from your parents. Mm -hmm. You don't earn an income, right? So what can you do about that? Of what goal will it achieve to you at that time? So this day we shall be trying to look at those kind of things. I'm going to ask you a question. What are the, what are, what are the things that you, you think can arouse love, can awaken love in your life or in your mind? Because emotions have to do with the mind, mm -hmm. the heart, the mind. I, I have, I'm emotional, I have feelings towards this person. What provokes that? That's the starting point because we need to know, right? Yes. What from the foundation? So tell me now, what feelings towards somebody? We're gonna to have to interact a lot, so nobody should be quiet. Yeah, you know, and shy and think. Yes, hands up. What causes you to have emotions and feelings towards the opposite sex at this at, at this at this time of your life? Please don't be shy because whatever you say will be for the benefit of everyone. Yes. Okay, I will say on behalf of my brethren because maybe they are shy to say. It. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what I think is that when uh, we are still um, at the Teenage, I would say teenage, is teenage, it? Age. teenage age from 12 Young to 13, yeah. 16. Yeah. So what happened is that uh, there's what we call puberty and I feel like it's to, um, um, uh, we want to discover the opposite sex. Okay. We want to learn about the opposite sex because when doing puberty we want to like learn about and when turning to interact with maybe the classmates of the other sex, mm -hmm. you get to be friends and then emotion arises when you are frequently with someone. <laughs> so I think yeah, that's so, how it so so familiarity leads to the emotions. When you're too proximity, yeah. we have picked something there. When you're too close to someone and you're at a certain age growing a bit older, when you're very close to someone, especially opposite sex, you start developing something more than friendship towards that person. The a connection begins to build. So proximity kind of provokes that. That's one thing that provokes proximity. Mm. You see how all these things can be addressed. Yes? Proximity. Everybody's doing it, let me do it. So again, peer pressure. Peer pressure company. You're in a in a school, everyone has a boyfriend, everyone has a girlfriend, your classmates come to you and they're like, what do you think you are? Do you what do you want to show off? Who do you, are you are you righteous than thou? Everybody's doing it. This is the 21st century. You cannot be like that. I mean, how are you managing yourself? It's not nice. They discourage you and they tell you, ah, but you need to, you need to engage yourself in some relationship because everybody's doing it. So I picked up two points. I mean, you guys are very, <laughs> very you're, 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 you're preaching, you're preaching my sermon. So that's good. <laughs> so proximity and peer pressure. Another person? Could you say physical attraction? 
physical attraction, okay? So you look at someone, the person is handsome, the person is cute, and therefore you want to know the person more, you want to connect. You don't want to just be my brother, my sister, <laughs> right? You want to come out of the friend zone, you want to come out of the brother, sister zone, you want to get into something more. I want that you should be, and me should have, a, it should be an item. Like, yeah. I don't want you to treat me the way you treat all the other brothers in church. No, treat me special. Special. <laughs> I, want <to> be special. <laughs> I don't want I don't, I want that special attention. You know, ladies always want, especially, I mean, men as well, I suppose, but men are the ones who usually like to give the attention. Women are always on the receiving end. Women always want affirmation. They want someone to tell them how they feel, right? They want someone to, to I mean, to tell them, how they look that they you know that they look nice they look beautiful there's that 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 desire there's a desire in in every lady's heart whether young or i mean from 13 going up as you said poverty puberty that you want someone to tell you that you you look good that you're nice that you're great you you, you need that affirmation it makes you feel good and when somebody tells you those things you start developing feelings you start loving that kind of person because of the things he's telling you you know, the words that he's speaking, and men are boys of what are very sweet talkers, talk no action. Talk no action. And that is what the ladies want. It's unfortunate. They want to hear those promises. Lies. They don't really care. The action will come later. The action, the action will follow later. He told me he loved me. He told me I'm beautiful. The action, whatever, will, will come later. But now he told me that I stand on his word. Because as a woman, you always want that reaffirmation. You want self-affirmation from, from someone special to tell you that you are loved, you are, you are cared for, you are beautiful, you are my special queen, you're all this to me. You're my angel. <laughs> and when, when you get this kind of words from, the, from men, it makes you have feelings towards that guy, right? Mm -hmm. Once you start with someone, some, a specific guy comes keeps telling you, you are beautiful, you are so sweet. You have all these characteristics, I, you know, I love you. It makes you look, it makes you feel good. It makes you start developing some interest into that person that tells you these things because it keeps feeding you, feeding your desire, feeding that, you know, that, that gap in your heart. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So, so we, one, we have one way, um, as I start, of managing these emotions or these feelings, especially from the lady's side or even from the guy's side, is that... Your, your, your desire for self-affirmation that is coming from this specific individual that makes you provoke those emotions out of you and provokes the feelings to grow more and more towards this person. You need to first and foremost find that affirmation in Christ hmm. as a child of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Number one, your identity is found in Jesus. So if you are depending on a human being to tell you how sweet you are, to tell you how beautiful you are, when you have not found that in Christ, then you will be easily persuaded, your feelings will easily be scared. This bro uh, brother A will come and tell you today you're beautiful. Say, oh, he did say I'm beautiful. Brother B will come tomorrow and say, you're so smart. Oh, So you have three brothers <laughs> telling you different aspects of yourself because you have not known and established that you are these things already. Because, not because of they told you, but because Jesus has told you that in his word, you will be easily drawn, your emotions will be pulling towards all of them. Right, because they are telling you what your ears want to hear. It makes you feel, it's like it's satisfying a void in your heart. So, the first, for me, the, the first step in dealing with your emotions or dealing with your feelings, managing them, is the fact that words of affirmation provoke those feelings. And those words of affirmation need to be found in Jesus first. As a child of God, your identity must be found in Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. You need to understand that you are not the same as any other person. Remember what her sister said. I think it's you. She said that when I asked the question, what provokes the emotions? Why do you have these rushes? Why do you feel the need? She didn't mention that because others are doing it. But now listen, are you, are you, are you others? You are different. You need to understand that I am a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, first of the two nine, set apart God's special possession. I have the spirit of God in me. I have the fruits of the spirit of God in me, of which 
One of those spirits is self-control. Hallelujah. Amen. So I am not like any other person. I cannot just do what every other person is doing. I need to understand who I am in Jesus Christ. Because once I understand my position in Christ, I won't be easily swayed by a crowd. Because the people that get swayed by crowds are people who are trying to belong. You're trying to find identity in something else. But when you know that your identity is found in Christ, you will not be easily moved because you are established. You are established, you know who you are. Praise the Lord. Amen. So when a guy comes and tells you, lady, you're very beautiful. You tell the guy, I know. I know that I'm beautiful. Mm -hmm. Because Psalm 139 tells me that I am beautifully and wonderfully made. Amen. You did not tell, you did not make me beautiful. I know already. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I already know I'm beautiful. I'm not hearing it from you. For the first time. I'm not hearing it from you for the first time. It's not news to me. Mm. It's not news. I know who I am in Christ. <laughs> the Bible tells me that I am beautiful and wonderfully made. Now, if you don't know the word of God, and you don't know what God, God says about you, you easily fall for that, say, oh, yeah, oh, I'm, he said I'm beautiful. But if you had established yourself in the word, you would have known what God was saying about you, that you, he already made you beautiful up front. So you don't need that voice. You don't need that man to tell you I'm beautiful because it's, it's not news. It's all news. Mm. Hallelujah. Amen. You already know you're beautiful. A boy comes to you and tells you, oh, lady, you're so smart. Wow, you're so intelligent. Look how much you did that test. In a way to flatter, you tell him, of course I'm smart. The Bible says I'm the head and not the tail. <laughs> you're not telling me for the first time. It's not news to me. This is not, oh, it's not new knowledge. Mm. Yeah? It's not new knowledge. I know who I am in Christ. Mm. I am smart because Jesus made me smart. I am the head and not the tail. These are things that you need to affirm yourself. <clears throat> if you find affirmation in Christ, you would not need any man or woman to tell you about yourselves. Yes. You, will not, you will not seek affirmation from others. Mm. You need to be established in who you are in Jesus. Amen. A man comes and tells you, you're my queen. You tell him, no. Mm -hmm. First Peter 2, 9, I am a royal priesthood. <laughs> God's special possession. I'm a princess of the most high. I'm not your queen. I'm not your queen. <laughs> I am the princess of God. 